All right, guys, what's going on? Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our morning note. My name is Carlos Garcia, founder and CEO of GAR Capital. Excuse me. Thanks for joining me again this morning, like we do every morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube. Before we begin, make sure to click the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, little white icon. Click that, turn on notifications, subscribe to our channel, like our videos. Really do appreciate it, as always. More great things to come. All right, so let me just retweet this news here for you. All right, so let's talk market, shall we? Uh, Dow futures down 169 off the lows. Uh, S, uh, NASDAQ futures down 120 off the lows as well. Uh, S&P futures down 0.62% at 4180. Uh, Russell 2000 index uh, down 0.87%. Uh, Bitcoin futures up 3%. Ethereum futures up 2.81%. <clears throat> crude futures are down 0.15%. Pretty much flat. Crude is starting to bounce back a little bit. Gold is down about 1.48% at 1881 an ounce. Uh, silver futures down 2.4, 2.3% at 2754 an ounce. Uh, the euro dollar, uh, 121.58 down 50 pips. Uh, dollar again, 109.94 up 36 pips. Uh, the dollar index is up 0.39% at 9026, and the VIX is up nearly 6%. Um, we did have some economic data that came out this morning. I'll go ahead and read that to you. Um, let me get my glasses. I'm freaking blind. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> U.S. jobless claims. We get this every every Thursday. Um, Better uh, less than 20,000 20, less than expected, uh, less than last uh, last week. Uh, to 385,000, the survey was 393,000 people who claimed unemployment. So that's good news. Uh, ADP, this is private payroll at jobs added, 978,000. Uh, great number because that did beat expectations. So <clears throat> the expectation was 650,000. The previous number was 700 and uh, 654,000. That was the previous. So 978,000 jobs added. Uh, that's a really good sign. Um, again, that's why we're getting a slight bounce here on uh, fut uh, equity futures. Really what everything right now everyone's kind of looking at is the meme names. We know this. So let's go ahead and kind of go over it together. I know that's something we talk about a lot. But again, when it comes to the market, hey, listen, we're going to report what's moving. Again, stuff that's going to help you profit in the market. Just a head point, I have these meme names. I don't own any of these meme names at all. I think the best bet is just to trade them, keep your risk where you feel comfortable, calls and puts, and just roll with them. I just wouldn't own them. Now, if you've owned AMC, BlackBerry, Nokia, um, Express, or GameStop, any other than GameStop, I own for charity. But any of those names, if you own them, keep in mind, you know, have a target in mind, what you're trying to gain. If you're just, you know, hey, I took my initial investment out and lend my profits right, totally cool, man. Go for it. But I just wouldn't buy anything on margin. I, I'd just be very careful, obviously. As fast as it go up, as fast as it go down. Uh, we also had some news that AMC, the, uh, the, the board or the company itself, is actually um, selling some shares. Let me go ahead and read that to you. Uh, if I can get this number. Uh, AMC, AMC, I'm trying to look on Twitter here. AMC plans to sell another 11.5 million shares and cautions investors, and I quote, our current market prices reflect market and trading dynamics unrelated to our underlying business or macro or industri industry fundamentals. Fundamentals, And we do not know how long these dynamics will last. Meaning they have no, they, they really don't see this run as something that's fundamental. Well, no shit, that's right. But they're gonna benefit from it. They're gonna sell shares, raise cash. Again, they're still a business. Uh, so understand that. Again, uh, all it takes is them to add more shares to the supply and again, can the Reddit traders or the market absorb these out there? So this is where I'm looking at a name like a BlackBerry that has mentioned nothing of share dilution, but they're riding the wave and plus it's cheaper. It's at $19.53. It closed yesterday, I think around $15.25. So I'll be looking for calls and there's some unusual activity. Look at it. Uh, BlackBerry may be a better play than AMC. AMC, obviously I'd call some of our our premium members and masterclass members did as well. They gained. Congratulations to them. But AMC, I took about 207%. I left a couple of grand on the table. I could have made probably 500%, 600%. But that's some of the things that as a trader, you just kind of get used to. I mean, there, you could have always made more. You can always be happier. You can always be healthier. You can always have more money, right? That's kind of the thing. But I had a target. My target was that was that Fibonacci level of uh, 50, 21. I didn't think we would break it. I thought we were going to kind of consolidate a little bit. And I went ahead and just sold it. And of course, hindsight is always 2020. I could have made more. 
So again, uh, right now I'm looking at a name like a BlackBerry. That is up very nicely. We'll take a look at pre-market movers right now. Uh, BlackBerry is up 30, uh, about 29.5%. Sundial Grower is up 16. I've seen that name many times. Um, uh, AMC is red. It was up pre-market. Naked Brand up 2%. Uh, look at Nokia up 2%. Uh, there's a name called GoEd. Uh, that's a penny stock up 16. GTT, uh, 28%. Again, I don't do penny stocks personally. The only penny stock I bought was Planet 13. And it's not a penny stock anymore. A penny stock is anything above five dollars. So there you go. Express is also another thing. They're also selling shares, and you could see if you had calls yesterday, they're down thirteen percent. So again, I'm really trying to, uh, to reiterate the fact that just be careful out there. Again, I'm not against you making money. Of course not. You know, I'm all for it. Again, hey, we signaled AMC calls as well, so we were in that train, and uh, we had the forty calls for God's sake for two weeks from now. We closed it. We made some money. As long as you get profit, as long as you manage risk, go for it. If you want to trade how you want, again, it's up to you how you want to do things uh, in regards to trading. Again, you only it's you against you. It's not a competition. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Just do you. Uh, let's take a look at the Dow and what's moving. Everything is basically red. Merck is the biggest loser here down 3.81%. Salesforce down 1.18%. 1, 1 Apple down about 0.65%. Uh, Boeing down about 0.81%. Ford Motor Company up about half a percent. Tesla down 1.18%. I have Tesla calls at 700. They're basically dead. Uh, so there you go. Um, I also talked about XLE yesterday, which was the uh, energy ETF. Let me move this over. Um, I went ahead and posted that. I'm in that trade. Uh, in XLE, there was some unusual options activity. I'm waiting for that break of 50, 55, 40, uh, 55, 53. That'll break this off this kind of a triple top, if you want to call it. I think we break it. Again, I'm still bullish on energy uh, for this year. Uh, you can see crude oil is green even after oil inventory numbers yesterday. OPEC is going to cut is going to cut supply, which demand is is increasing. Obviously, as more people are driving, people are going back to work. So again, I like energy here. I think energy has some more room to run. There's names like XOM, CVX. Again, if you want to get some dividends out of it, you can. But I think I prefer when it comes to energy just to trade it. I'd rather have the short term profits on that and than actually buy any of these names. Uh, when it comes to value, again, you know me. I'm a pound the table on banks. JPM, I have some JPM calls. It's been very good to me. Um, right now, they're down pre-market. It, it's just bouncing off the 50-day. What I've noticed on the financial names is that first thing in the morning, they do rise a bit, and then they kind of fade a little bit, and then they kind of go sideways. Again, this is not an AMC. This is not a GME. We know that. But with JPM and the financials, a big catalyst is coming tomorrow, which is non-farm payroll report. Now, keep in mind, last month's payroll report was way below expectations. Now, let's see if the employment number is great tomorrow. Now, there's kind of a double-edged sword here when it comes to NFP. If we have a bad NFP report, the Fed is going to probably keep the foot off the gas and say, oh, we don't need a taper. We need employment to be better. And if employment is really good, again, good for the market, more people working. But again, the Fed will probably be like, hey, see, now we have inflation creeping up a little bit. Uh, I think it's a little overblown, in my opinion. But again, the employment thing, uh, looking at that, you could see that, uh, hey, you know, uh, employment's getting better. Let's start tapering. Uh, again, that's kind of the idea of what the Fed is doing. Sometimes bad news is good news, good news is bad news. So kind of understand that. But again, uh, if with a strong employment report and the Fed saying that, if, let's say they say, hey, good employment report, uh, we're, you know, we're going to taper, uh, meaning they're not going to buy as many uh, government bond, uh, mortgage-backed securities, treasury bonds, if, for, uh, mind you, rates are going to go up then, which is a good thing for financials and value names. Dividend names are going to be more valuable. So again, JPMs, the cities, the Bank of America's, the Goldman Sachs of the world are going to get bids. So will energy and those names. So again, the proxy with inter inter interest rates is really your financials. So I would kind of keep that an eye on Citibank, Bank of America, JPM, those money center banks, are Wells Fargo. Again, I've been saying it, JPM I do own. I don't own any other bank stock. But again, with interest rates going up, that's probably something that you do definitely want to see. When it comes to tech, I've gotten a lot of questions. People saying, oh, Microsoft, Amazon, basically flat. Again, guys, it's the same thing. I've been expecting big cap tech to take a backseat. Until Q3, Q3, Q4, you're going to start big cap tech catching some bids. So what I've been doing, again, is waiting for an opportunity. If big cap tech does go down, I'm going to go ahead and buy some more. You know, I added some Tesla the other week. So again, I still love Tesla long term. It's one of my larger positions. Again, I have my my bucket, my my core holdings. I'm kind of like focused on those right now. Uh, and then the last the last point is that I was looking at some call to put to call ratios. Put to call ratios, meaning the relative strength of put contracts out there being bought versus call options being bought. Put to call ratio is at its lowest point since 2011, keep in mind. So again, 
there's a lot of people buying calls. Now, again, that could be skewed with AMCs and the meme names, obviously. So take that with a grain of salt. AMC traded more shares than SPY yesterday, traded more volume than SPY and Tesla. I mean, that's unprecedented. Again, everyone's jumping the train. And again, guys, it doesn't last forever. So again, if you've made some money, congratulations. Just don't try to be happier than happy either. Understand that there's a goal in mind. When you have that goal, cash out, buy yourself something nice, enjoy your money. But at the end of the day, it's just money. Keep in mind that sometimes we just get lucky and we're in the right place at the right time and just take it and move on. Always have the idea that enough is enough. Uh, that's just my my two cents on that. Good morning. Um, is your focus on other parts of the market, AMC again today? AMC already is very, very juiced when it comes to the premiums. They're very expensive. So my eyes are on XLE because I have that. JPM, I have that. I'm watching BlackBerry. I think BlackBerry definitely has some room to run. I believe I talked about it yesterday on the aftermarket recap. I have some Fibonacci's level here in front of you, in front of me. Again, the high that we hit was 28.77. That was the uh, right, right in January. Right now we're trading at $19 a share. So 19.45. If you place an alert above that, I think above that 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. If you do break that, then I would definitely start taking a look at some volume, at some volume out there. So maybe some longer dated contracts since it's very cheap, but. If you really want to kind of hit a home run, usually how it goes with these kind of meme names is that you really have to go out of the money. If the closer you are to the strike price, it's going to, you're not going to get as much upside. For example, the 40 calls I had, they were deep in the money, but the ones that were really moving were like the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 100s strike, for example. There was no 100 strike, but I'm saying example, the farther out you go, you have the higher, uh, the higher return. Again, kind of a think if it's a strikeout or a home run. I mean, you have more chance for a home run if the stock moves for you. But give it some time, give it a couple of weeks, uh, you know, expiries, so you're not going to kill yourself and try to do it for tomorrow expiry, for example. But again, I'll keep an eye on the volume for our premium members and our masterclass members, our members in general, and see if there's anything that's worth looking at. Because, hey, you know, we've traded meme stocks before, guys. This is nothing new. I've traded Express. I've traded uh, BlackBerry. I've traded Nokia. I've traded AMC. I've traded GME. Uh, there's nothing, nothing new. I mean, again, at the end of the day, the market is giving you opportunities just understand the risk involved, that these moves don't last. AMC is not going to go to 1000 a share. Very likely it's not going to happen. Again, I could be wrong, but again, uh, just look at what the market's giving you. AMC is already to the point that the premiums are very, very pricey. I think BlackBerry is probably your better bet. It's a little cheaper. And again, I like to chart a lot more. We were already at AMC. We nearly tapped the 423.6 extension. So if anything, we may come back down to the 261. I wouldn't be surprised if we tapped 30. Uh, and in the next couple of weeks, not a bad thing. I'm not short or anything, but again, these kind of moves, we what we call the reversion to the mean. Again, you get these spikes and then we come back down. I've seen it in Tilray a couple years ago. You've seen it many times in other names. And again, fundamentals need to back these kind of moves, whether it's a, like a takeover or they're merging or they have some, you know, expansion of some kind. AMC hasn't done anything. This is purely a short squeeze play. So understand that before you get in. Uh, buying Tesla below 600. No, my Tesla level, uh, right? Remember, I bought a couple weeks ago. Uh, Tesla, my my level to buy is 485.25. Again, that's just me. I like those. I, I like those kind of discounts. I buy Spy G every week anyway, so I'm buying my Spy G this week. But Tesla, again, uh, pretty much sitting on right below the 200-day moving average on the daily. I'll wait for 485.25, which was the previous breakout point in November. If we recheck that, I'll go ahead and buy some more. Thoughts on NVAX, lots of catalysts during the break, breakout. Let's take a look at it. I believe Nova Max, I don't know much about it, but right now it's trading at 166. It's down pre-market. So I don't know much about this name. You can see it's fading a little bit. Um, I don't know if they have a lot of volumes, uh, option volume here. Um, your, that 50 day moving average on the daily seems to be that, that resistance. If that does break, I could probably see you uh, basically targeting the 200 level for the 100 day moving average. But until then, I wouldn't touch it. Good morning. Tilray breaks 2080. Uh, if Tilray breaks 2080, do you think calls look good today? Uh, I wouldn't trade it for this week. That's for sure. You only have till tomorrow. But again, if you break 2208, that seems about right. If we go on the daily, and we talked about reversion of the mean spikes, went from 67 on Tilray all the way down to what, 13? Uh, so again, <laughs> other than that, keep in mind, if you're looking at Tilray, the 100 day moving average is right around 2120. So you did fill this gap here, 1970. If anything, all we're going to do is just fill this gap. And we already filled it before, excuse me, right in, in, in April. So 2122 
to me would be the level of resistance to break. If that breaks, then I would take a look at that 24 strike. But right now, I wouldn't touch it, uh, just personally until red. Uh, is NQ red so today? Uh, the assumption on NQ is that in looking at it here, there was really had positive economic data. It could be just many factors. You can use uh, you know any excuses that you want. Inflation fears. You can also say, oh, um, uh, mega cap tech is being rotated out by value again. Or you could say to yourself, hey, you know, we're getting the same deal in regards to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in regards to, uh, what was this, uh, the, the deal, um, oh God. in regards to the meme stocks getting all the love and the volume of the mega cap names are down. So again, what I'm looking at is probably the inflation fears and also the hedge funds that are short these meme stocks have to sell the really good, and I almost call it cash equivalent names. Maybe they have to get rid of an Amazon or a Google or an Apple in order to prop up their position because they probably don't have cash. It's an example. I don't know what the hedge funds are doing, honestly, until I see their your their uh, their reports, and uh, we have to go from there. So again, the only thing is that you just have to react. Again, I'm bullish the market still. Obviously, I'm still bullish mega cap tech. I'm expecting Q3, Q4 to be absolutely amazing. I think these names will bounce back very strongly. Um, <clears throat> good morning. Thoughts on BGS when you have a chance? I don't know what BGS is. Um, let's see. Look at uh, BlackBerry go. <clears throat> BGS uh, thirty four twelve pre market. I mean, I guess yesterday was it was up and now it's down. Um, again, kind of another breakout, just like Nova Max or I mean like Tilray. Uh, but again, I don't know the volume on it. Um, if you're looking to buy it, I have no idea about this company. I don't want to pretend like I know. So looking at it again, if you're looking to trade it, maybe break 40, and then you can probably get to that wick high of 47, but I have no idea on the same thing. Thoughts on NIO, love NIO long-term, I own it, no problem here, um, no, don't plan to sell it or anything, it is down pre-market like most tech today. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and bring it up on a chart on the hourly. Again, you can see, it does wanna kind of fill that gap right here at 38.58, it is starting to bounce a little bit, that 50-day moving average seems to be that kind of magnet there, so again, let's see what NIO gets, but nothing there I wouldn't trade, no. Uh, with people who are shorting AMD, AMC sold calls or bought puts. Again, I don't know. There's many hedge funds out there. So for all I know, they shorted the stock. Um, I don't think they bought calls or bought puts. Who knows? But again, let's see what they what happens. Thoughts on Square? Love Square long term. Um, obviously, I own it. Uh, it is a Bitcoin proxy. Um, looking back at it here, it's at 218.20. It's down pre-market. I'm waiting for that level of 232.45 to break. If that breaks, then I'll buy calls. But until then, you don't touch it. Uh, Geo. I don't know what Geo is. Uh, Geo, kind of another penny stock, guys. I don't know much about these names, so I'd be very careful. Uh, WKHS Squeeze with Workhorse. Yep, again, starting to see it. Look kind of very similar to a Bla to a BlackBerry. And you can see these kind of meme names. Again, I think what these guys do is just rotate out of them. Right now, we're above the 100. If you want to target the 18 calls on Workhorse, I'm okay with that. Since we're breaking that level, I'll go ahead and even write it down on my uh, on my notepad. Uh, let's go ahead and write down focus, uh, BB, and workhorse. So let's see if we do break. Uh, let's see, I had the hourly here. Uh, all right, so if I'm going to go ahead and chart workhorse, I'd probably wait for that 1822 level. Let me get to this thing. So 1838. Let's go ahead and place an alert together. We'll put 1838. If it does break, then there is a gap to fill on the daily. Uh, let's go and take a look at it. Again, I don't know the volume yet, Mark's not open, but there is a gap to fill right here, right at 31. So again, that would be a really good uh, idea to try to trade it if you're looking for some quick gains on it. But again, just keep in mind, understand in the back of your head that there's risk involved. These names, again, they can move very quickly for you, very quickly against you. So let's place an alert at 1838 on a workhorse. It's at 14. Again, it could run very quickly. I don't know if we're going to get that today, but just keep that an eye. An eye. If it breaks 1838, the 100-day, I would target uh, 31, if anything. Uh, thoughts on buying Amazon price level? I love Amazon, of course. I think it's very underrated, uh, but look, are very uh, underpriced. I mean, you just since basically September, we've been staying in a, in a, in a range between 3200 and 3500 it's not as sexy anymore as many people think, but again, it's a cash equivalent in my opinion. I think it's just an amazing company to own. Uh, I'm waiting for 28.65 to break, then I'll add more. Uh, NVIDIA, 
I love Nvidia, but again, remember they're splitting their stock. So I'll wait for that stock to split. It's breaking out. I played calls yesterday with the team. Um, again, I'll watch Nvidia, but with that stock split, I want to see if they fall a little bit and then I'll load up some more shares. And Palantir, love Palantir long term, of course. And you can see it is down pre market. There's a 100 day moving average on the actual daily that I want to break, which is 2539. If that does break, let me go ahead and clear this other uh, channel here, this other one. Let's clear this $28 one. Okay, so that 100 day moving average, 2539. If that does break, I'll go ahead and target 28. And uh, Rocket, again, I've talked about Rocket many times on charts that we're looking at charts today. I haven't done charts of the day in a while. Um, again, I've been doing the aftermarket recap and all stuff. It's a lot, it's a lot to do. So the market to market recap is a lot more popular, but the charts, again, if you have one that you like, let me know. Uh, looking at Rocket, again, it's down pre-market, not a huge deal. Nothing really to really get, really get uh, you know excited about other than that, that 100 day moving average on the daily, which is around 21, 27. If that breaks, then I would target around 23. But again, I don't love the company long term, but it is a good, it, you could probably trade it for sure. And AbV, I don't own AbV, but if you were looking to buy, I would wait for 102, which is your 200 day moving average on the daily, get a deep discount if it goes there. GTT, another penny stock, I have no idea. I'm not gonna be one to pump those names. I don't know them. So again, I don't know if they have options at all, just be careful. And uh, I believe Starbucks is the last one. Uh, Starbucks, my alert is 107.43. I own shares, so that'll be my alert to buy some more. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, so a lot of good questions. Thank you guys for all the questions. It was fun as always. Let's keep the focus here today on BB and Workhorse. I think Workhorse, again, place that alert with me. 118.38. If it breaks that, then we can probably place some calls for that gap fill level here right around 30.87, so for 30 calls. A little farther out strike, give us some time. Let's see what the volume brings. Again, guys, it's very simple. If you guys want to take a look at some really crazy names out there that's getting some volume, go to Scan, go to Options Hacker. Um, again, I've seen a lot of people use those uh, those Options Flow stuff. I've seen them on Twitter. I don't use that. It's very simple. Save yourself the 99 bucks. You can just go to Volume, go to 10,000 minimum, Option, leave it blank, and then you go to Scan. Obviously, the market's not open, so it won't show me, but again, this will go by Options Volume. Anything above 10,000 is a pretty good amount. Uh, you can move that to 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 is a really good number to kind of wean out or fo uh, filter out everything else. But let's take a look at BB and Workhorse today. Let's see what we can get. Again, I'm still holding JPM. I'm still holding some XLE. My Tesla call went to hell, whatever. So again, I think uh, now we're getting crude bouncing a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at one last look at XLE. Again, uh, 55, 23. It's about 20 cents down pre-market. That's okay. I think we break 55, 53. I have calls for two weeks from now, so I'm happy with them. I think they look great. We'll leave it there, guys. Have a great rest of your day. If you want to take a look at this again and know how to scan volume here, it's very simple, guys. One more time. Scan, options hacker on Thank Your Swim, volume 10,000, scan, and you got it. Uh, keep in mind that if you do it at 9.30 in the morning, you're probably not going to get a lot of hits. So again, just like a search engine. Uh, have a great rest of your day, guys. Make sure to save this video if you found anything important that you liked. Make sure to like or comment. We really do appreciate it. All comments, as always, uh, even critical ones we get. We understand. We're not perfect. Have a great rest of your day, guys. We'll catch you guys with the aftermarket recap. Enjoy yourselves. Happy Thursday.